gave me a word of musicians, you can stay right there, stay right there. Because the praise team almost sung my message. So I honor the Lord for the spirit of agreement. I honor the Lord for the power of his spirit that when we're on one accord with one heart and one mind, God will speak. God will speak. I said, God will speak. We're on one accord with one mind and one heart. God is speaking. He is speaking. He is speaking. The Lord has been dealing with me. And as they say a lot of times, I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm really not going to be before you long. Hallelujah. Because the Lord has accomplished so much in the worship. And the Lord has been dealing with me, Percy and Jason, over the last six or seven months. Dealing with me about the state of the world, dealing with me about the state of the nation, this state, our um, economic collapse and a pandemic in the state of the Christian church. He's been speaking to me. He's been speaking to me. He's been speaking to me. He's been dealing with me. And I got overwhelmed at one point, daughter. And I pressed through to God in prayer, Pastor Tracy. And I said, God, what, what, what is this I'm looking at? What, I mean, this pandemic, our kids can't go to school. People are losing their jobs. Houses turned upside down. I said, God, what am I looking at? The church is divided, black versus white. Who's staying home and who's going in the building? Families, I said, who's staying home and who's going in the building? Families are being torn apart. Folks have been quarantined at home, Percy, and don't even like each other and, and filing for divorce. I said, God, what am I looking at? What is this? Criminal justice reform and systemic racism and police brutality. And we haven't talked about this as a church, but he's been dealing with me. And I said, God, what am I looking at? My heart is broken. I feel overwhelmed. I get depressed when I watch the news. God, what is this and where are you? I said, what is this and where are you? And he spoke to me, Aaron. And he said, daughter, but you know me. And I said, God, that's really not an answer to how I feel. He said, no, it's the answer because you know me. And if you know me, it doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't even matter how you feel. And it surely doesn't matter what you think. He said, you know me. And I said, well, what, what do I do with that information? He said, you conduct yourself as status quo. You live a life like Jesus in um, Acts 10, 38 and in Matthew 4 and 23. And it said, Jesus the Christ, whom God anointed to preach the gospel, went about doing good and healing all manner of diseases. He said, daughter, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, doesn't matter. He said, you still have a charge. You still have a responsibility to pray for whoever's in office. To pray no matter what the economic system looks like. To pray whether your child goes into the building for school or not. You have a charge, daughter. You still need to live holy. You still need to have a prayer life. You still need to be in your word. You still need to be interceding. You still need to be a light and darkness and salt that makes the difference. He said the trouble is the church has gotten distracted. talking about them folks who don't serve him I said the church has gotten distracted he said see because if you know me Aaron if you have a relationship with me there are certain things that go on in life and my son is six because he know his parents because he know we got him it don't even phase him he's still playing games he's still eating snacks he's still going outside playing nothing changes the house could be turned upside down but because he knows his daddy because he knows his mama got it. Nothing changes. And so the Lord took me to Psalm 103. And as the praise team was practicing, I said, God, I thank you for the com confirmation. He took me to Psalm 103 and he began to ask me three questions. And Nusa, he said, you know, first of all, you need to act like you know. And that was going to be the topic of my message. Act like you know behave like you know 
Conduct yourself in a way like you know that God is still on the throne. Conduct yourself in a way that you know that if you pray, God will answer. Conduct yourself in a way that no matter what's going on, you know that your will should be the kingdom of God to come and be established in the earth. That your charge does not change. That your foundation is not shaken. That holiness is still right. And you still have a burden and a cry and a hunger to win the loss to Jesus Christ. Because when all this is over, we go on a out of here see John P. Key has a song that says I'm what I'm living this life to live again and some of us in the church we forgot this is just a temporary dwelling place it's just temporary Jada he asked me three questions he said who, who do you know in Psalm 103 what do we know about him and how do we know him who do you know? What do you know about him? And how do you know him? And in Psalm 103, the, the psalmist David, I begin to study and, and look, and there really is no um, specific po time point in his life that identifies why he wrote this psalm. See, in other things it says, oh, when he won the battle of this, oh, he wrote this psalm when they crossed over this. But see, in Psalm 103, there's no description. And when he begins to say, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. See, when you're talking about who he is, Yahweh translated over that phrase about Lord in the Hebrew translated over, Laura means Yahweh, the I am. The one that introduced himself to Moses at the burning bush when Moses had no clue who he was and God decided to show up out there in the desert and the bush caught fire and what really should have happened Amari is that it should have disintegrated but see the miracle was it was burning up but it still didn't get destroyed. God said I am that I am. I am Yahweh and being translated over it means I will be what you need. Whatever your situation is, I will show up and I will manifest myself and be what you need at that time. I am Yahweh, the I am. So when David says, I will bless the Lord, I will make a, a, a intentional act to bless Yahweh, the one who has always showed up, who's always been whatever I needed. He never failed. He never lied. He was never wrong. He's never been late. I bless you, Yahweh. I choose from the inside he said with everything that's within me he said I bless you I am and then he said and I will not forget all of your benefits see sometimes things can go on in life for those of you that have a job and you have benefits some of that stuff you don't even use you don't even know like what it means until you need it so you get a, a certain kind of ache or pain and you go to your PCP and they say no boo boo you need to go to a specialist and you say oh I'm covered for the specialist I pay this amount and I can go and they can take the test and I can get better see sometimes in life and all this stuff we looking at here in 2020 and people say oh throw it throw, throw 2020 away the devil is a liar oh no I said the devil is a liar we are not throwing 2020 away see what's happened to the church to the believers for those of us that really know him that have a relationship with him we recognize some things about our benefits package that we may have kind of tossed to the side because it wasn't prevalent at that time but see if it's now November in almost December and you ain't been in the hospital on a ventilator I said if it's November and almost December and you have not been in the hospital on a ventilator and your loved one speaking to you through the glass and the folks in the ICU holding your hand while you gasping for breath you have realized part of your benefits package and David said you're the one that heals all of my diseases of my diseases and then the Lord dealt with me Jason and he said daughter I know everybody's worried about the pandemic 
But see, there's some other things that came to fruition and came to light in 2020. Some sin sicknesses. And see, we don't, me and Pastor have been very politically correct. And we've been very um, intentional and very specific about what he, what we've been saying. But see, God said there were some sin sicknesses that have been exposed because of the pandemic. There have been some sin sicknesses that have been uncovered and revealed because our kids can't go to school, because folks can't gather in a church, because somebody lost their job. See, the real you has shown up in 2020. And see, Laura, I had to repent. And I had to ask God to heal me. See, because he said, oh, I told you, Acts 10, 38 and Matthew 4 and 23 says he went about healing all manner of diseases that can't just be physical, mental, spiritual. And I had to check my heart, Anusa. see, because I'm connected with people on social media that don't think like me. They don't vote like me. Oh, you don't want me today, but I'm going to say it. They don't think like me they don't vote like me they don't conduct themselves in a way that lines up with what I believe and 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 how I've adapted to run my life but see I didn't know that until the pandemic I didn't know that till they told us to start wearing masks I didn't know that till folks started protesting the street I didn't know and I got mad Pastor Tracy and I got hurt and I got offended and I got wounded and I wanted to snatch my baby out that school see I know you can't tell the truth but I can I said I wanted to snatch my baby out that school I wanted to tell my husband let's pack up and get out of this racist state of North Carolina you don't want me to tell the truth I got distracted I got offended I became bitter. My husband said, babe, every time you you say something, you know you're talking about this and talking about that. And I was like, well. And then I had to go back and I had to kind of nurse that thing and go to God in prayer. And he said, took me right back, you know me. You know if you pray, I'll answer. You know if you ask me to do something, I'll move. You remember that I'm sovereign and it doesn't matter what's going on the bible says that the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool he said you know me act like you know somebody turn at home in here turn to somebody and say act like you know act like you know who he is act like you know what he does act like you know and there's a a a, a part of psalm 103 i think it's in verse um, four it says who redeems your life from the pit I think King James said redeems your life from destruction and when I begin to kind of they say extrapolate use my fancy Bible words and begin to study there's a, a Hebrew word um, Amari that says Hagowell Hagowell H-A-G-G-O-E-L Hagowell that says redemption of life by the kinsmen See, so that was really a foreshadow of Jesus Christ, see, because God made us joint heirs with him, and he came down, my elder brother Jesus, and he gave his life so I could be saved. See, in Old Testament, the kinsman redeemer, well, let's say if Angelie was married and she didn't have any children and her husband died, then the next person, the next male relative on the husband's side, your dead husband's side, would marry you so your name wouldn't be forgotten, so you'd have provision, you have somewhere to live and you can have babies to carry on his name that was the kinsman redeemer so when David is saying you redeem my life from destruction it's saying you know what your situation was really raggedy your situation was really jacked up you really had no covering you really had no provision but God and his infinite self decided to show up in flesh through 40 and two generations and manifested himself as Jesus Christ laid down his life died rose back up from the dead so that I could be saved so when David is saying I'm gonna bless him at all times with everything that's within me and then he goes down this list I'm gonna bless him and not forget all his benefits see when I'm watching I gotta turn off Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and I gotta think about 
around. You know what? Let me bless him because I'm still saved. Let me bless him because I still have my mind. Let me bless him because I can flick up a switch and my lights come on. Let me bless him because I can turn my faucet and clean running water. Let me bless him. No matter what's going on, I choose to bless him. I choose to worship. I choose to give him the glory. I choose not to forget my assignment as a blood-bought believer that I still have work to do. Then we go down to verse 7. And he said something, and after this I'm closed and I'm done. I'm really going to be done. In verse 7 he says, sorry, 6 says, The Lord works righteousness and justice for everybody that's oppressed and then he says that he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel and when you read it Angeli in the message Bible it says God makes everything come out right he puts victims back on their feet he showed Moses how he went about his work and he opened up his plans to all of Israel. When the Lord says, remind the people of God, they know me. You know how I work. You know, your, you and I have great history. See, because all this time in Deuteronomy, when we've been talking from chapter 1 through 10, we've been talking really about three things. God speaking to us face to face, not my mama, not grandma, not Aunt Fifi. He's talking to me. He's talking to you. Talking to us face to face. He talked about covenant. He said this, is, this surpasses a regular written contract. Covenant institutes a relationship that you and I have. And then he said, I want you to just know my ways. I want you to spend time with me and hear what I have to say, Jay, and do what I tell you to do. He said, so you really know me. But what you gotta remember, that in all of this, he said, my relationship with you is very specific. See, because Moses knew God's ways. He knew why God did something. He understood God's heart. See, a lot of folks who know Pastor Jonathan do certain things, whatever, you know it from the outside, but when you have a relationship with him, you'll understand, oh, he just don't eat, he don't eat red meat. You just know his ex. But see, as his wife, I know his ways. I know he can't eat red meat that often because of what it'll do to him physically. And what God is saying that we've had too many encounters. We've had too many experiences. I've brought you through too much. I've revealed too much. I've brought prophecy to pass. I've done things in your family. I've opened doors that no man could possibly open. I've healed and sealed your broken heart when you thought you were going to die. When you would lay in your bed and the, 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 the tears are rolled back in your pillow and you wake up and you know you've been crying all night, Jay. See, because then you got these white strands. You ain't never had them white strands on your face from crying. I said you've never had the white strands on your eye because you've been laying in the bed crying until you fell asleep. And God said, I brought you through all of that. He said, so you, 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 know, you know me. We know, it. Nene said on um, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, she said, we know each other. That's what she told Candy. We know each other. So what God is saying, we know each other. Don't get distracted. Don't stop honoring me. Don't get off your assignment. Don't stop giving me the glory. Don't stop being who I've called you to be in the earth. Don't stop praying. Act like you know. Act like you know. We're standing. I'm done. I'm done. We're standing. We're going to close out with verse 17 and 18 and I'm done. The Bible says, but the steadfast mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Anybody that watched Center Point for the last three weeks, you know that's just a summary of Deuteronomy. The covenant, the obedience, the relationship, that word mercy in verse 17, um, Aaron, is translated from the Hebrew, and it means hesed, H-E-S-E-D, hesed, and it means covenant love and loyal kindness, covenant love. God is reminding us today of his covenant love. He said, act like 
like you know. Act like you got backup. Act like you got power. Act like you know I'm for you. I want to say something. It doesn't matter what happens in January, whatever the state of this nation is concerning our political climate, the Lord is still on the throne. I said it doesn't matter what happens in January. It doesn't matter how it turns out. God said, act like you know. I'm still on the throne. I think he says here in verse 19, the Lord established his throne in the heavens, Anusa, and his kingdom rules over all. The only panacea, the only cure-all, the only ultimate solution is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everything else will change on you. Let's close our eyes. We're blessing the Lord. We're honoring him. We are acknowledging God that we know you and you know us. We're going to act like we know that you are the I am. You have always shown up and manifested yourself as what we need. And we honor you for that today, God. God, we're going to act like we know what you've done for us. We're going to remember the private battles, the private struggles that you brought us through, the multiple healings, plural with the S, physical healing, emotional, spiritual, psychological, relational. God, we're going to remember what you did for us, the ways you made, the mountains you brought down, the valleys you exalted. God, the times you sent streams through our dry places. God, we're going to act like we know. We're going to remember who you are. And the ultimate sovereignty of your mighty hand that you can extend your hand, God, and man live. You can speak a word and man die. God, you can do anything because power belongs to you. We know you, God. We know you. We know you, God. We know you're in charge. We know, we know you're in control. We know that you are just. We know that you are fair. We know that you are perfect and holy and spotless and blameless. So we put our trust in you. We reestablish this part of our covenant, God. We put our trust in you. In Jesus' name. And God, we acknowledge that the only reason why we know you is because of our experiences. God, you've taken us on this journey called life and we can look back and we can see that you were always there. When we didn't even honor you, you extended your mercy and your grace. The prayers of those that went before us were in action, activated in our life. God, when we were in a backslidden state, God, when you weren't even on our mind, thank you that the prayers of the righteous were yet availing much on our behalf in this journey and we love you we love you God more than words could ever express and we thank you that today today through your spirit and through your word you have released an overflow you have rushed in and released an overflow every area of our life God we thank you we thank you. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you. We thank you today, Jesus. Hallelujah for rushing in, for rushing in today. Hallelujah, God, for accelerating your word and the manifestation of your presence for rushing in. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We say amen. We put our hands together as a sign of agreement. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give him the fruit of your lips right where you are. Come on and thank him. God said, act like you know. Act like you know me. You know me. You know what I've done. You know how I work. You know how I move. You know me. Come on. Come on. You know me. You know me. You know me. You know me, honey, la 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 baha. You know me, honey, oh so conde le beresia. You know me, he condo sa. Hiriani la 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 baha. You know me, condo si ende le bosora baha. We have relationship. We have relationship. You know me. O conda la baha. You know me, yando koda la baha. I've shown you who I am. 
in your very own life. Act like you know. Hallelujah. Act like you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name today. Hallelujah. If there is someone that's watching us today and you do not know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, we invite you to surrender today. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. If this message, if this, this um, account of our relationship with God, if that's foreign to you, you can be saved today. You can be saved right now, right where you are, in your car, in your home, on your job, wherever you are watching the replay. You can be saved today. All you have to do is lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Father God, I believe that you raised Jesus up from the dead. I believe it. I receive it. I confess it and I'm saved. If you said that today for the first time, we rejoice with you. The, the Bible declares that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you have accepted Christ as your Lord. Would you inbox us? Would you inbox Center Point Church so that we can connect with you? We can pray with you. We'd like to partner with you on this journey, this new journey that you're embarking on in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that once knew God and you walked away, for whatever reason and everything that's going on, the Lord has been pricking your heart and convicting you in your spirit and you want to reconnect back to him, you can do that. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm back. God doesn't make things deep. It's not complicated. Salvation is very simple. Just lift up your hands where you are and say, Lord Jesus, I'm back. Amen. Our sanctuary is open on Sundays. If you're um, looking for some place to worship, we do have stipulations in place to adhere to um, the guidance that's been given to us by our governor. We certainly um, obey those that have the rule over us. Amen. Um, but we are here every Sunday for, at 1045 until the Lord says something different. And you are welcome to come and join us and fellowship with us as we worship the Lord and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, if you want to give, if something has been said today that blessed your life, if the worship experience today has really turned your life around and you want to sow, please do so. On your screen, there should be um, some information, but you can give um, electronically on our website, which is cpcnc.org. That's www.cpc dash nc.org amen you can also give at um dollar sign cpc nc on venmo paypal and cash app if you don't have a church home and you want to sow your tithes we will take it we will bless it in jesus name and use it for the uplifting of the kingdom we thank you in advance for your liberal giving amen hallelujah